Probably are. So we're going to measure, what, another 20 feet? Yeah. Because they're close to 20 feet apart. The post sleeves, the part that we hammer into the ground, is slightly uh, wider than the poles. And that's so that you can uh, adjust the poles and uh, level them. Uh, every sleeve comes with a uh, small bolt here, and they're all pre-drilled, and you just uh, screw in the bolt here to tighten the uh, post inside of the sleeve so, it won't be, so you won't be able to lift it up or slip it out. So what we do is we use these rings and these eye hooks, and then we'll put the rings on this post. Like so, this just rides right over, and then you just screw this eye, eye hook in. And right now I'm not doing it very tight. I'm just putting two on as preparatory work. And what we're going to end up doing is one of these will be two feet from the ground and one of these will be five feet, foot from the ground. And that's where our tension wire will attach to, which is what our fence attaches to. So I just, as he's putting in post, I add two of these on and we'll adjust them for space later. So now we're just going to put on the post cap so no little critters start living in the post. And that's just a little plastic piece. Kind of set up here, use a rubber mallet, and if you're lucky, it just pounds right in. If you're not lucky, Ooh. you smack your finger, which I've now done. This is the post sleeve that he's going to put in. He tends to use that to get it started. But as you can see, since it's so low, he has to use the sledgehammer behind him. So the more level the sleeve is when it goes in, the easier it'll be to level the post. So for our fencing, we're putting 45 of these posts in, and that's in addition to using a lot of trees. Alright, so I'm just putting this first eye hook two feet and the second eye hook. Yep. Five feet. Then I'll come back after I've done measuring them and tighten them up. So to tighten these eye rings up, we just use a screwdriver and swing it around until it's as tight as we want it. And don't force it too much because you're really just denting right into the pole post. So you just want to get it so it feels tight enough. Straighten it out. So the thing about all these steps is, is it just takes a lot of time. It's not so much that it's difficult, there's just a lot to do. If it were a smaller area, of course it wouldn't take as long, but for us, between both of us having jobs at different hours, and the fact that we're fencing in over an acre of property, it takes a lot of time, that's all. Just enough. Just barely enough. Okay, so let's put this. Uh, 
this process is just like a little centimeter at a time. So it's pretty, well, it's a little loose. So maybe you get a little more. a cam lock. Uh, these particular brand is called Gripple. Some one of the patented design from these guys. And basically when you fire, feed your uh, threaded steel cable through this thing, it only goes in one direction. So you could feed it forward but it won't it won't reverse out. So to tighten it you just grip the steel cable right up against the cam lock and roll it forward and you see it pulled out a little section you just keep doing that on both sides of the cam lock go ahead and explain what the wire is for ultimately uh, just to hold up the fence this is what we're going to attach the fence to the uh, steel mesh as well as the uh, polypro polypropylene mesh and though the fence will still have movement to it, that's what prevents certain dogs from climbing on it because they don't like the moving fence. But this stops it from just flying around everywhere and keeps it standing up straight. See, one thing I've noticed, you have to be careful when you're tightening these gripples and try to hold it upright because by pulling up on it from on the bottom, you have a tendency to turn the gripple horizontally and that causes the wire to like the uh, plastic mesh that's covering the steel cable to kind of scrape off. It's about as tight as I can get it. The hog ringer is where these work, they kind of look like a row of staples, and they get placed on the, to this guy, like so, and it doesn't hold them all, so some of them have to be ripped off. And you close it up, 
and what you do is over here on the fence if you need to get two pieces tighter together you place this you have to pull them in real tight squeeze it and it bends the ringer right on the fence thereby holding it all together and as you can see Desiree we're using a lot of them we bought 900 linear feet of fencing they sent us 6,000 hog ringers. I have 5,000 more on the way because we're using a lot more than they recommend to keep it buttoned up tighter. All right, this is where we're going to start today. And I'm just going to do a quick walk around as to where we're at. Still have a lot of stakes to put in. For the tension wire work in progress. We have a lot of forestry cleanup to do. There's a tree that we use to attach to. Turn around. It was quite a ways back there somewhere. Comes up around here. The gate will end up attaching to the porch. Here's the pond. Over here's the old dog yard that they're still using. There's their doggy door. All of this area will be opened up for them. And once it gets open, instead of going that way, we're going to be bringing the fence down around this way. And as we go, we have things like this to clean up, such as getting that big old dead tree down. But they'll have all of this as their yard. Come down around here. And it will cut over 
We gotta clean all this up. That's their full walk around. Got a lot of fencing to go. But as it's completed, they'll have all of that. Up there's the pond and the house. It'll come around over into there. And the other thing we've got to do is clean up the dog yard for them so they don't get injured from things like this. Colorado Desert. A lot of old cacti in there.